The following is a production of Shark Flight Media. Shark Flight Media. Shark Flight Media. Shark Flight Media. From mechs to mages, or agents to argonauts, this is the world of Chris Kennedy Publishing. This is the CKP Future Books Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to the October Future Books, uh, where we talk about the new releases in the CKP universe. Once again, we are excited to have our author, our publisher and editor and author, uh, Chris Kennedy, with us, uh, talking about what's coming out and giving you a heads up on what to look for in the month of October. Welcome, Chris. Hey, thanks a lot for having me, Randall. Great to be here, like always. Man, we're, we're super happy to have you. We uh, have a month with four books this month from several of our favorite authors. And this month, the uh, range of genres is, is very wide. We have fantasy, we have military, we have cyberpunk. So without- we've, we've got all sorts of great stuff for the readers this month. I mean, we've, we can go all over the place and uh, you got a need, we're going to satisfy it. Absolutely. And so we will just go ahead and jump right in without further ado and start talking about October the 4th. October the 4th, we have uh, what starts the the second series of books in the Salvage title universe. This, uh, this series of books will be called The Invasion. The first book is Salvage Purgatory. And it's by Nick Steverson and Jason Cordova, two of our favorite authors. Tell us a little bit about it. Sure thing. You know, so the Invasion series follows up the Coalition, which uh, was, I believe, 25 books or so. Um, And, you know, so they were building this whole coalition. Everybody was getting to know everybody else. And now you find out why that's important, because there's about to be a whole lot of badness that's coming. Um, and, and this is going to be the first book in the Invasion series. Um, you know, Jason and uh, Nick have done a great job uh, setting this all up. You know, you've got somebody out on the fringe uh, who's, you know, just trying to get by and bad things are going to happen to him. Uh, if you've ever read anything by Nick or Jason, you know that there are probably going to be a lot of casualties involved. Uh, I wouldn't get too uh, too t- too tied up with with any of the people because you never know who's going to go next. Um, but you know it's going to be exciting. You know that it's going to be full of action. Uh, they have uh, two books coming back to back. You've got this one on October fourth, and then you have Salvage Harbinger uh, on November eighth, um, and then there's going to be a third book by uh, Kevin Steverson. Um, which is salvage defense that will follow that about uh, five weeks after that. So this is, you're going to get back to back to back books uh, as we go charging into the invasion. Uh, There'll be plenty of books in this series as well, and it's going to be exciting. Um, You know, if you've, if you've liked the salvage title universe so far, this is going to give you everything that, you know, you're expecting, Um, you know, Nick has written uh, not, I don't even know how many books in the salvage title universe anymore, Um, He's got a bunch and, you know, so he's been bringing it and he's going to keep bringing it. One thing I do want to mention while while we're discussing Nick and Jason, uh, for those that follow Jason, uh, he was just diagnosed with cancer. Uh, He's had some some pretty good news on it in that it looks like it's going to be pretty treatable. Um, But there is a GoFundMe uh, that he's set up uh, to try and help with his medical costs as he uh, kicks cancer's ass. Um, you know, take a look at his Facebook page and, and uh, you know, if, if you're of the mind, you know, please go ahead and uh, give to uh, help him beat cancer. Um, that's that's certainly something that's um, very uh, close to my heart since Sheila spent most of the last year dealing with it. Um, so, you know, if you can help out, please do. Absolutely. And uh, this we'll, we say this occasionally because. Uh, well, we've been doing the podcast for, I think this is, we're starting our fourth year. So three, <laughs> three for sure. Happy birthday, us. Yeah. A lot of the original series that uh, that we talked about have reached the conclusion of their first stories, but that's not ending the series. Our authors are now starting to take these series and uh, make them make sharp left turns and sharp right turns and uh, starting them over again. So if you've been intimidated by especially Salvage Title and Four Horsemen, right now is a great time to get in on the start of the second 
second year or the second season uh, of of these books, and you don't have to Absolutely. have a lot of backstory. Absolutely. This starts out, you know, from from ground zero again. And, you know, like you said, if you were afraid to jump in because there were a bunch of books to read, jump in here. This is another great starting point. Absolutely. And then uh, we will uh, leave Salvage Purgatory there and we will go to October the 11th, where we have the second book from our new author, Gustavo Bondoni. And that's just a fun name to say. It is. It is a wonderful <laughs> name to say. Uh, this is in his Shadow, Shadow Wired series. And uh, this is an example of uh, our evil mogul. Chris Kennedy and the evil CKP taking over the world. We started with just uh, Amazon eBooks. Then we started uh, translating our books into several different languages, and the world has started to like uh, what we're writing. And now we're going out and getting international authors. Uh, we have authors for, uh, that are writing in Australia, in France, and uh, now in Gustavo is in. Help me out, Chris. Brazil. Brazil. Uh, so uh, CKP is taking over the world. And yeah, so we've, UK, Ireland, Canada, US, France, uh, Brazil, and Australia, I think uh, we have authors in right now. So far. Uh, so far, yet. <laughs> so this is Shadow Wired Doomsday. If you're a fan of Neil Stevenson, if you're a fan of William Gibson, uh, this is a dystopian cyberpunk with a good, strong dose of uh, cyber thriller uh, mixed in. So tell us a little bit about it. A absolutely. And and this is action from from the get go, just like uh, just like the, the first one was. Um, this it follows the the same uh, hero Sked, who at the end of uh, the first book is happy and life is good. Uh, he's he's got the the woman that he's always loved. They retire, wonderful, and then he wakes up in the middle of the night and she's gone. Uh, oh, and not only that, but the the one group that he hates beyond all else. She's now working for. Uh, so how does he get her back? How does he stop her from doing this? How does how does he keep uh, that comp that that group from um, turning off India's uh, basically their air defenses so that Pakistan can nuke them and start World War Three? That's where the doomsday comes from. We're looking at all out uh, warfare and then with the potential of a land warfare in Asia. I, I really like Gustavo. <laughs> what, what else? What else could go wrong? I love Gustavo. He is a great addition to the CKP family, and uh, this is a good series to start. There's only one book ahead of it in the series, so don't just buy Shadow Wired Doomsday. Buy both of them, Shadow Wired and Shadow Wired Doomsday, and get in on the front end of the series. A absolutely, I I love this series, and I can see it going on beyond the trilogy. It's uh, right now. I have three books. You know, it, if the the folks want more, uh, he is a prolific author. He's writing all the time, um, so I'm I'm sure we can get more out of him. Take a look. This is a great series, and and I absolutely love it. Um, you know, it's like popcorn. It's just you know, just keep going. It's definitely a, a movie book. It, it runs yeah. a movie in oh, your head. Oh, yeah. When you read it, it. it could totally be a movie book. Then on October the 18th, uh, we move away from our science fiction roots and go into the fantasy novels. And uh, we have Rekha's Grasp uh, by H.Y. Gregor, most recently seen uh, in the Ashes of Intasia series and the anthology uh, Remnants of Empire. Uh, she's a frequent CKP author, and uh, we're excited for her new novel, Rekha's Grasp. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she's she's really coming on strong. She's done a lot of uh, great shorts, and and now this is uh, her first trilogy. She just completed her third book here, I think, yesterday, and they're going to come out back to back to back, just like uh, we like to do. So you'll get Reka's Grasp on uh, October 18th, Tugaran's Revenge on November 22nd, and then Chernobyl's Wrath. Um, which will be December 27th, which will be the last book of uh, this year for CKP. The, the neat thing about this series is uh, it's, it's not uh, a completely new world. It's something that longtime readers will be very familiar with. 
Um, this series takes place in uh, John R. Osborne's Milesian Accords universe. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So basically, um, he's done a lot of the, the different mythologies as, as he's gone through his uh, five books in the universe. Um, she's going to pull in some of the uh, Russian uh, mythology, huh. uh, Baba Yaga and all, all of that, and and bring that into uh, being. Um, so it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's something you know, but it's also something you don't know. And I'm really looking forward to this, especially after the the last couple books or a couple short stories that she's turned in. You know, I she really has the chops to do this, and I think it's going to be great. Well, we can't wait. And uh, I'm a big fan of the Milesian Accord books. So this will be right at the top of my reading list. And then we're going to end the month on October the 25th with The Return. Uh, This is a new series by Williams Frisbee, fans of The the Last Marine. Here's a new series by by William Frisbee Jr. And uh, this will be in the series called The Conglomerate. uh, And we're going to be releasing this on October 25th. Absolutely. And and this is this is really a neat series. Um, it is not new totally. It's new to us. Uh, this is a series that uh, Bill uh, wrote a while back and he published it himself. And, you know, I think uh, he did a lot of the a lot of the editing and the covers. And, you know, I got a hold of it. I, I saw him one day lamenting the fact that this never really uh, got much traction. And I said, well, well, let me take a look at it. Um, and I loved it. Uh, so we've re-edited it. Uh, we're putting new covers on it. And if you liked The Last Marines, you're going to love this. Um, it is very much uh, Bill Frisbee. Uh, it is not a Marine sort of thing. It's more a um, a fleet sort of action um, dealing with he's uh, a main character who has sentient uh, robots. And after not being around people for a long time, is now forced to interact with them again um, and become the person that he should be. Um, this is this is a great, great series. Um, I've I've read the the first book in it. Looking forward to reading the second. Um, and and I can tell you, you know, if if you like the Last Marines, you're really going to love this. Well, that sounds like a really full month for CKP. Uh, there's something here for everybody. If you if you're a big salvage title fan, you got a salvage title book. Uh, we've got uh, cyberpunk, cyber thriller with Shadow Wired. We have epic fantasy with uh, a new book in the Milesian Accords with Rika's Grasp. And then we've got our military science fiction with William Frisbee. You can't ask for much more than that. It's a great lineup, and and the stories are awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking time to come with us this month and talk about the the what's coming out in October. I want to encourage everybody to take to heart what Chris said about Jason. Jason's a great guy, and uh, if you don't feel led to uh, donate to his GoFundMe, at least go to his Facebook page. Tell him you're thinking about him. Your mental attitude in a situation like this has a lot to do with with how it comes out. So uh, any good wishes would be great. I have one more thing that I did want to mention here before we close. Okay. Um, by the time everybody hears this, it will be about one month out till Factory Con. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that uh, there were still some, uh, still a couple uh, cabins that, that were open. You know, if, if Factory Con is something that uh, you wanted to do, there's there's still room. And, and I hope you sign up and come. Um, for fa- for folks that don't know what it is, Factory Con is kind of a thing that uh, CKP does uh, as a give back for its readers. Um, we all come and hang out at uh, the campground down the street from uh, where I live, um, get a bunch of the authors, a bunch of the readers, and, and we just hang out for a weekend. Um, it's like uh, going to a con, except that you don't have to get worried about going to panels and missing this and missing that. It's just a chance to, to hang out readers and, and authors and, uh, you know, just have some quality time together. So, you know, if, if that sounds like something you're interested in, um, there is a, a Factory Con 2024 page on uh, Facebook or, you know, just ask any of the authors and, and we can uh, hook you up with it. You know, love to see you here uh, come November. It's November 1st through 3rd. Uh, just picked up uh, some mahi, 30 pounds of mahi mahi for the fish fry. So uh, I'm hoping people will come eat it. Well, I tell you, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, Factory Con, this is our third year, fourth year. 
Um, it's the fourth year here um, in, in CoinJack. We did uh, several in uh, Virginia Beach when I still lived there. So, so uh, I think I think we're up to seven. I think this is seven in total wow. now. So, yeah. So, um, you know, this is this this has very much the same tenor as uh, Liberty Con. If you want to go to a con where you can meet the authors, uh, be able to have a conversation and hang out and be around people that have the same interests you do. This is a great way uh, to do it in, in a beautiful environment. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Chris. We'll do this again in the month of November. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, everyone, for listening to the first half of the podcast. This month, we have a special guest, the editor of New Mythology Press, which is part of CKP. Uh, it's probably been a couple of years since we've talked to him, and there's been many changes in his life. And uh, so we want to talk to him about some of those changes, and then we want to talk about uh, where New Mythology Press is going and uh, how the next year looks uh, as far as he knows with New Mythology Press, with the uh, things that he can actually talk about. Welcome, everyone. This is Rob Howell. Welcome, Rob. Hey, thanks for having me, Randall. It's, it's been a while, like you say, but I really appreciate you having me on. Well, we, we always look forward to having you, and uh, we, we are really excited uh, with these uh, new changes in your life. Uh, I've been following along, and it looks like that you've had a big move and that you have started a, a business. So before we talk about New Mythology Press, why don't you update our listeners on what's happening in the life of Rob Howell? Well, you're right. There's been a huge change in my life since the last time we talked. Uh, when when we talked last time, I was living in um, Kansas City area, and uh, it was a fine place that we lived, but my wife and I have been kind of looking to get out of the Kansas City area. We've been kind of looking at some small towns, and we found a place in Anthony, Kansas, which is south of Wichita by about an hour. Mm -hmm. And it part of it was is that my wife, who's, who's had fairly successful careers in a number of really good occupations, She's been wanting to run a quilt store for quite some time. And so we opened up a quilt store, Red Dragon Quilts. Red uh, Dragon www.reddragonquilts.com is where you can find us on the web, in fact. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's exciting. Well, it looks like you have like uh, a little bookstore running there, too, from the pictures I've seen. Are, are you selling, uh, selling uh, books and stuff like that there also? Yeah, we are. We have a little um, little area, the the front um, of the building. The building is larger than we uh, anticipated, and it's even larger than the quilt store she wanted. So um, we um, we built, or uh, we put in a small little used bookstore, mostly used, and then, of course, I have uh, stuff from New Mythology Press and my other stuff from other publishers, and, and we've gotten some things from people like John Osborne and... Uh, Diane Reed and uh, John Sears and some other authors in the CKP universe. And then also um, uh, from some other small publishers who wanted to just get their toes into the brick and mortar um, world, such as um, you know, Rack and Tour Press. Um, so, uh, and they actually are actually fairly close to me there in Wichita Falls, which okay. is different, of course, than Wichita. But anyway, um, it's nice to be, you know, one of the great things about doing the publishing thing and, and, and writing is how awesome it is. You get to work with so many people. And the fact is that we're all working together. So even though I'm mentioning some of the other publishers like Three Ravens and Raconteur, and, and there are so many other good ones out there, truth is, is that uh, Rising Tide lifts all boats. And while that's true for CKP and, and new, new Mythology, it's also true for all of us trying to create good content. And so that's, um, that's one of my favorite aspects about having come into this career from some of my previous careers. Yeah. Well, I, we're, we're really happy for you. And um, at the end of the podcast, we'll give that website uh, out one more time. But it's been exciting watching you uh, get the get the building prepared and uh, put everything in place and actually get it open, which leads 
to the next portion that, that I wanted to talk about. Um, during the time that you were making the move and getting things set up, there were not there was not a lot of activity with New Mythology Press, but I've noticed in like the last quarter we're starting to pick up. Uh, we've got we've had a couple of uh, of releases recently. Uh, this month we're going to have I think Rika's Grasp uh, by H Y Gregor, and uh, I'm talking to Chris. Uh, offline it sounds like there's going to be uh, more releases in the next year so i'm sure you're excited about uh, actually being able to focus on your editing and publishing absolutely absolutely yeah um you know i i told chris and and when we were deciding to do this that um it was going to you know that was going to naturally affect what we could and couldn't do um you know in terms of i was going to be spread thin and he was gracious enough and uh it turns out we had some things that we could push to this point and what we have come what we just had recently come out was responsibility of the fleet that came out uh, a couple of weeks ago in uh, September, here in September, and it is the third book in the uh, Endless Ocean series by G. Scott Huggins. Um, this, this series is really innovative and it's full of action, and the main character is someone you want to root for. Um, it's everything we kind of like in stories, which is, you know, again, characters we want to, to see succeed so that we can we can root for them as they fight against dangerous foes and in this one the foe she ends up fighting isn't the one she expected uh it wasn't the the nation that she's been struggling with for for some time now it's uh something something far worse and uh threatens the entirety of the universe or or of her world and it was an exciting um full of action and their allies that she discovers along the way that no one expected least of all herself and enemies that came out of various different places that she didn't anticipate either so it was one of those so what every time you turn the page there's something cool happening and it's some new fight and some new challenge and it again it's a character you love to root for so there you go that's one of my favorites it, this has um, been a beautiful story so far and uh the author uh lucked out these covers for uh for for this series have all been really really nice uh this last one is very striking uh yes um j caleb uh designs did that series of covers and Honestly, you've probably seen, if you followed CKP, you've seen his covers um, just because he's done so many good things for us over um, over the last, well, ever since I've gotten involved with uh, helping Chris run New Mythology Press. Um, he did all of the covers for the Valor series. He did covers for a number of other series. Uh, he did my covers uh, for my... Um, Firehall Sagas series. He's just a fantastic artist, uh, reliable and, and generous with, with changes. He's a great guy to work with. So um, can't talk about him highly enough. And in fact, we've got a couple of those that we work with that are really good. Uh, the series that is upcoming uh, involves an artist named Alejandro Rito, uh, who has done a number of covers for us in the past. He did the covers for the Malaysian Accord series by John R. Osborne, um, one of the best-selling series we've got, sort of our flagship series, if if anything is. It's probably and, my favorite uh, fantasy series uh, between between uh, uh, John Osborne's Malaysian Accords and Chris Nuttall's. Was it a trilogy? Yep, the 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 um, trilogy he did uh, started with the Chimera Coop. Yep. Exactly, those two were probably my favorite uh, new mythology series that I've read. Chris Nuttall is just—he always provides high energy, high action stuff. Um, well, he's a that, machine. He's a machine. He really is. He's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason he has been one of the rock stars for independent writing and small press writing basically since this became an option. I mean, he's been going at it now for 
15, 20 years and, and tons of great stuff over the years. So can't talk uh, again, another guy it's joy to work with is Chris, uh, is Chris. So, um, look for the Camara coupe and that'll get you started on a three book series that you'll read quickly. It's, it's kind of thing where you pick up the first one, you finish it in the, you know, overnight, you don't get any sleep. Mm-hmm. And then you do the, the silly thing and pick up the second one and go, Oh, I'll just read a couple of chapters. And then, you know, you don't get any sleep that night. And then you have to read the third one the third night. So, um, I, I warn you, he, you know, his, his novel, will will take away some sleep <laughs> but by the same token john osborne's malaysian accord that that is uh that is the top shelf of fantasy at it ckp is. and is. uh that is. story is as good as anything uh any in any of the major authors in the bookstores uh yeah, it, i agree it, it it's absolutely fantastic and i think there's something new going on in that universe yeah, um, I, as I mentioned, Alejandro Rito did the covers for the for um, uh, Reluctant Druid and the rest of the Malaysian Accord series. Well, it turns out that we're expanding the Malaysian Accords universe with Haley Greger. Um, uh, you mentioned, mentioned Rekha's Grasp. Um, it's actually a trilogy that will – Rekha's Grasp comes out on October 18th, so about three weeks, uh, three weeks from Friday. Um, that'll be out. And then um, five weeks after that is Tagar and Revenge. And then the conclusion to that trilogy will come out uh, right after Christmas. So uh, sort of a not quite a Boxing Day present for you, but something right after Christmas you can look forward to as you're recovering from whatever your um, holiday meal may be. But yeah, it's a really so I've edited now the first two of the series and they are good. Um, they're really good. Um I, uh, my background is, is I probably mentioned last time is, uh, medieval history. I was medieval historian by training and part of the area that one of the areas that I, I studied sort of a secondary area was medieval Russia. And as part of that, uh, I also took an interest in medieval Russian epics and medieval Russian uh, mythology, um, that's where we're going with this. Um, so um, this is set in the Pacific Northwest, which um, you um, folks out there probably know, of course, that, you know, uh, Oregon and Washington were, were settled first from a European standpoint by the Russians coming down from Alaska and along the uh, Pacific coast there. So there's actually quite a bit of Russian tradition in that area. So and- are we going to see a walking house in this novel? I can neither confirm the uh, existence of a walking chicken-legged house in these novels. <laughs> and that is an obscure piece of trivia, and anybody yep. who will look that up will understand uh, uh, why I made that comment. <laughs> yeah. No, she's done a great job. As I say, I was pretty familiar with Russian mythology um, beforehand, and she's found some stuff I didn't know about, which I think is great. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason that her little chunk of the Malaysian Accords will be called the Vignoya Saga, uh, Vignoya being a particular beastie from Russian mythology. And uh, it's, um, it's it's fantastic stuff. Uh, obviously, a reluctant druid and that had a had a, a a neat variety of mythologies built into it, um, but tending towards Western Europe. Yeah, and he would um, have he would have characters from uh, other pantheons kind of wander in and out occasionally, which was pretty fun. Yes, yes, but now we've got uh, we we've got a completely different set of uh, focuses, uh, and there may be more coming. More other pantheons may get their opportunity to shine the way Haley is doing with this. Uh, As I say, I've really enjoyed editing these uh, full of action. Again, that's what you want from, that's what CKP promises. We're going to give you action and an adventure. And um, the, the two main characters, one's just a grad student trying to make her way and, and, things don't go smoothly, which, you know, having been a grad student myself, I'm fully aware of how that normally happens, how things don't normally go smoothly, but not in the way that, you know, this happened. Uh, And then the other is a a federal agent um, tasked to help with the magic that's coming into the world. Um, And, you know, 
throughout the entire Malaysian Accords, all these people trying to do the right thing, and it never goes smoothly. Never goes smoothly, does it? No, never does. And I, I tell you, it, it, it reminds me of something that uh, Jim Butcher said to me one time. He says, I wake up in the morning, have my cup of coffee, start thinking about Dresden, and then try to figure out how in the world can I ruin his day in the worst possible way. And he says it makes great novels. People want to read that. Yep. I was actually writing something. Um, I'm writing um, the third of my Forrester novels as we speak the, in the Four Horsemen universe. And, um, you know, today, as a matter of fact, I ruined somebody's life. And how they're going to come back from it is going to be an interesting question. Um, don't want to get too much into it, but there's a lot of bad things happening in this one. Yeah. And this is on top of all the bad things that have happened to this unit and uh, their allies along and, the way. And for the listeners who don't know, uh, other than publishing be, uh, all of the stuff for New Mythology Press and getting it ready and working with the authors, he also writes in the Four Horsemen universe and has a great group of mercenaries. So if you, if, uh, uh, and, and it's not something that there's 37 volumes of yet. So if you want to read, uh, <laughs> Uh, if you want to read some some really good space opera, military science fiction, the first book in that series, the name of it again, Rob? Uh, is The Feeding of Sorrows. And then I have book two, which was The Ravening of Wolves. Which was fantastic. And, yeah, I really enjoyed that one. Um, that one, uh, honestly, when I was writing Feeding of Sorrows, I got to 150,000 words in it and went, okay, I'm about ready to to write the final battle and then every time i would look up no i gotta do this this thing has to happen and, and it came very clear at one point uh around that time that what i had to do was write one of the two epic battles because that was one novel on its own absolutely and then i had to write a complete se second novel which was quite literally so focused on that battle because of the time frame, the time involved, that I had to count the number of hyperspace jumps. If you're familiar with the Four Horsemen universe, you probably know that a hyperspace jump is approximately 170 hours, which basically two weeks in hyperspace, and that's the way it always is, plus your time from uh, the Stargate to the planet you're going to on both sides. So it's essentially like a two to three week long trip every time. And this then Ravening of Wolves, when I wrote it, I wanted it so fast that I literally was thinking months. So they literally had maximum of two um, hyperspace jumps throughout this to be able to get them to the battle in question. And that was part of the challenge for them, of course, was that how do they prepare so quickly? That was a lot of fun to write. Yeah, well, um, I, I, liking, I liken it to the first book being like the pilot episode, which generally, even with a good series, the pilot episode is good, but the second episode is always the best one. And in this case, uh, you know, the first episode, your first book was fantastic, but it really set the second book up. Thank you. Well, this is the third one, and it's it, and and as I have, as I finished the second one, I said, okay. The way this has to work, there has to be a third one. There's too big of a plot uh, hole or thread that has to get taken care of, uh, and I can't leave this this particular group without um, Some closure. taking care of that. Now, I will say this. It's an interesting thing. Um, because of my shift in focus, for example, with the stores and with, uh, you know, making sure to keep a proper attention on new mythology – I do see that this is probably the last of the Forrester novels, but one of the characters from that is Rick Blaine, um, who was a super spy guy, hacker dude, that I kind of created uh, first, sort of the started up the whole series. And Rick um, is actually going to continue in short story form as he searches for um, – there's a thread that deals with him and his boss who uh, who had to suffer the uh, the retirement policy of the, of the that company and that retirement policy is rather final and rick has to check to find that answer which he does not here's a spoiler he does not find that answer in um the feasting of vengeance no there is more vengeance to come from rick and actually i'm going to be writing that or passing that on to dan bridgewater who's a really talented author who i am um, um 
have had a lot of fun writing a short story with uh, involving Blaine already, which came out in Bureau 42 about uh, three or four months ago. Boy, that was so. a great anthology. It was. It was. Yeah. Honor to be a part of it. Um, so. So tell us uh, what you can about what uh, the rest of 2024, uh, 2024 and what 2025 looks like for new mythology. Well, like I said, we're going to do these, this trilogy uh, from Haley, um, and that will come out October, November, December. Um, the next plan, there's another trilogy coming from a different author in a new universe that uh, uh, it's got a little bit of Dresden Files. It's modern fantasy. It's got a lot of Dresden Files in it, except it's uh, um, it adds. He, he's a, um, sort of a magic cop, and he's got to try and, and make sure that uh, all the magic gets used in reasonably appropriate ways, according to the federal rules behind it. And uh, so it's got some of that Dresden Files, except it's sort of the cop version of it. And uh, yeah, it's it's Dresden Files got a lot of um, your private eye feel to it and really well done, of course. And this has more of the same sort of thing. But now we're dealing with um, your cop on the beat trying to, to make everything work. So there you go. Uh, I, I'll talk more about that down the road. I, I don't want to. No, no, you, I, I don't want you to spoil anything. I'm just trying to look at, uh, you know, do we have do we have uh, are you working on any anthologies next year? So we're going to uh, take a break from anthologies for a bit. And the reason is, is we've done some great anthologies. You, yeah, but absolutely. Um, Part of the uh, joy of doing the anthologies was having the opportunity to do them in conjunction with Fantasy. So, and, and to be honest, we've spent a good amount of time developing short stories and we've put out some great stuff, but we do need to focus on some long form stuff. And I had a, had an open call uh, in June and uh, I'm, I'm getting close to the, <laughs> we got so many entries. I'm, I'm still, still weeding through them. I'm trying to give them all the, the attention they deserve. And there's been some really good stuff in there that I think we'll be seeing as well coming out in 2025 down the road. Uh, but that's, uh, boy, it, 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 it's so many balls in the air for new mythology. So it's kind of hard to just juggle them. I don't have any great. Uh, well, it sounds like new mythology yet. is getting spun back up again. So I'm very excited really to see is. what it comes really out. Is. Uh, so one of the things we've been doing, um, um, touch some things on, um, I know we're approaching the close to time. So I want to mention a couple of things. One of the things we've been doing that's been, uh, um, really, uh, well done is a, um, a new mythology mailing list that Casey Azell, who you probably know if you're a CKP fan, um, has uh, been has wanted to do this kind of thing and has started a a new mythology mailing list. So if you just want to focus on new mythology press and you don't want to have to mess with Facebook or Twitter or whatever, you can sign up for that. Uh, you can get to that by going to Chris Kennedy Publishing slash Fantasy, and there's a place to sign up right there. Um, so that's the best place to keep your uh, your ear to the uh, to what we're doing. Let's let's give them that address one more time. Chris Kennedy Publishing dot com slash Fantasy is the new mythology website. Thank you so much. Uh, so, and then what were you going to say after that? I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, there's a new mythology press discord channel. If you want to send me an email and you're in, you're into discord, you want to join it. Um, you can send me an email, Rob at Chris Kennedy, Kennedy publishing.com. And I'll happily send you an invite. Uh, we don't just talk new mythology stuff there, which you know, we, we've done some great things and I'm proud of what we've done, but there's a lot of great fantasy novels and movies and and all sorts of uh, games and everything. We talk about it all. So if kind, you want to talk so kind about of the fantasy the, uh, genre. It's kind of the new mythology version of Bane's Bar. Yes. Yes. It is. It is developing into that. And in fact, uh, one of the veterans from Bane's Bar, um, uh, Nathan Ballier, who I believe was was on on the bar. Uh, is one of our primary moderators. And I got to throw a shout out to not just him, but Charlie Cox. She um, posts a question, uh, some sort of uh, interesting question on um, whatever topic appeals to her every Tuesday. So we always have something, some new prompt. Uh, this week was uh, what's your favorite game? And it wasn't just uh, fantasy games. Of course, that's what we 
tend to, but you know, what's your favorite game? And so that, that was neat sort of com, um, conversation. So there and, you go. And before we wrap this up uh, one more time, give everybody the web address of your business one more time. Okay, so um, the, uh, the the business is the quilting business is Red Dragon Quilts dot um, excuse me Red Dragon Quilts and it's www.reddragonquilts.com. If you have problems getting to there without using the www, go ahead and put it there. There seems to be some sort of weird issue sometimes for people. It's been something we've had hell of a time pinpointing, but put the www there and you'll be fine. Uh, and I, I did want to mention one other con thing that's coming up. Um, I have a con that the next con that I'm going to, I'm kind of taking a lot of time off to try and get my feet back under me from all the upheaval. But my next con that I'm going to, um, is Chattacon in Chattanooga. And I have the pleasure and the honor to be the um, the Toastmaster there. So well, congratulations. If you are in the Chattanooga area or a close and you like a good con, come join us. And give them the dates for that. January 18th, 19th, and 20th, I believe. I'm looking them up right now. Uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th. My bad. 17th, 18th, 19th. Yep. Well, yep. Ro- Rob, we really appreciate you coming and talking to us. Uh, I think we're going to make this an annual thing. Uh, awesome. I, I'm honored. And we're really excited about where new mythology is going. Uh, super excited about the new Milesian Accords. And I can't wait to hear more about uh, uh, about the new uh, police mystical uh, enforcement uh, series that you're going to have coming out. So Yeah, uh, you're, 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 I read the first one in a night because I couldn't put it down. So that's, you know, when I'm looking at something, whether I'm going to write it or not, uh, that, that's always a good sign. If I can't put it down, okay. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> well, we appreciate you being here and look forward to talking to you next year. Thanks. Have a great night. Appreciate, appreciate everything you do, Randall. No worries. Thank you. You've been listening to the CKP Future Books Podcast with host Randall Willis. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider leaving it a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you subscribe. Show likes and channel subscriptions are also much appreciated on the CKP YouTube channel. Finally, if you'd like to know more about this author or others on the CKP roster, visit ChrisKennedyPublishing.com. Thanks for listening to the CKP Future Books Podcast. We'll see you next time.